Hello, my name is Yu Qiao and my research area is game and cultural studies. So today I'm gonna share my current work and uh, the research topic is uh, ex experience China's intangible cultural heritage in role-playing games, comparative studies between uh, MMORPG and uh, LARP games. Okay, to start with, I uh, will introduce something important about intangible cultural heritage and then discuss why role-playing games have uh, great potential in uh, safeguarding intangible heritage in China. And at last, I will introduce uh, uh, one LARP game and the two MMORPG games and analyze why uh, or how uh, China's intangible cultural heritage is represented in these popular role-playing games. Uh, so at the beginning, it is necessary to talk something about uh, intangible cultural heritage in China. Yeah, we all know that uh, protecting the in intangible things is is not an easy task. But why? Uh, but what are real challenges and uh, difficulties in the protection work? So first, yeah. According to the uh, recent research, uh, yeah, young people have very limited knowledge about intangible cultural heritage. Yeah, for example, for uh, Chinese youngsters, they know that uh, safeguarding the uh, uh, cultural heritage is a very important thing, and uh, uh, our and Chinese government emphasizes more on the protect uh, protection work. But uh, they know little about uh, what kind of intangible cultural heritage in China and uh, uh, what is oh, and uh, what are the uh, current situations about these uh, intangible uh, heritage things. Are they uh, in danger or not? So something like that. So the uh, most uh, most uh, young people only have a uh, very superficial understanding about uh, the intangible cultural heritage, and uh, the second thing is that uh, a lack of interest among young people in giving uh, continuity to uh, heritage practi practices, and uh, uh, another fact uh, is more about the economic. Yeah, so intangible cultural heritage market cannot provide considerable amounts of money and work, which means that uh, uh, maybe few young people prefer to consider, uh, or they, they do not want to uh, study or learn the uh, intangible heritage skills or practices as a uh, uh, left work. Okay, so if a person wants to learn something new, mm -hmm, he will probably experience uh, three main steps. Experience, explore, and uh, finally, love. So therefore, how to create uh, an amazing experience to attract people's attention is a very important task. And uh, I think uh, role-playing games have it, its advantages in this part. Okay, so uh, I will introduce a very interesting uh, concept called edutainment. Uh, so what is edutainment? Edutainment is that uh, edutainment becomes a strategic tool to preserve the traditional skills and the knowledge while promote while while promoting local cultures. So, yeah, entertainment is a very big concept, including various uh, frontier techniques like movies or documentaries, and also including games. So, uh, on this level, so could we consider game as a new method to um, preserve the tradi traditional skills and knowledge? So. Okay, and uh, at the next step, so how can we connect or how can we 
make the connection between intangible um, cultural heritage and the role playing games is also a, a very it's also an interesting task or it's very uh, interesting things for our researchers. Uh -huh. Uh, as you see in the PowerPoint, so uh, intangible cultural heritage can generate a lot of uh, role-playing games content, and uh, role-playing games can also represent the intangible heritage. Of course, including the China's intangible heritage, and uh, from a lot. Uh, from these a uh, lot of figures, yeah, as you see in the in the movie or in the video, so we know that China has various intangible cultural heritage, yeah, and uh, most of them uh, recognized by UNESCO or uh, by or national or national level uh, heritage, mm -hmm. and uh, we also know that. Chinese government also emphasize on its protection. So how can we make these connections? Yeah, between uh, intangible cultural heritage and uh, different type of role playing games. So, in previous research shows that role playing game can can be considered as an intangible cultural, uh, intangible uh, heritage practice. Russell and uh, John argue that. Role playing is an uh, ideal pedagogical method for experiential and uh, active learnings. Uh, similarly, um, yeah, we we discuss something about uh, entertainment. So Hannigan use uses the word entertainment to express his idea of joining together of educational and the cultural activities with the commerce and the technology of the uh, entertainment world. Uh, finally, through participating in role-playing exercise, it is considered to be a particularly effective yeah, for en enhancing multicultural understandings. So, okay, so these researchers provide uh, a significant academic foundations to support that role-playing games can be a helpful way in uh, intangible heritage protection work. Okay, in this section, I will introduce a new concept called Jubensha, which is a kind of uh, LARP games popular in China, and I will also introduce Jubensha games called The Secret of God's Lanterns as an example. What is more, analysis of uh, China's MMORPG games are also significant in my studies, and I will introduce two games called Justice Online and uh, Dream of Jianghu. So, okay, so Jibensha is a, a type of, uh, a typical, yeah, or how to say, it's a kind of a, a LARP games in China, and uh, also have uh, 4 to 12 players, and uh, occupied uh, 3 to 5 hours. So, Mm, most of Jiben Sha games have a uh, setting as uh, the suspects of, of a murder, murder case. And uh, I will talk something about the secret of God's Lanterns, which is a, a very famous uh, Jiben Sha in, in China. Mm -hmm. The back background of this game is that it is uh, designed and supported by the government of Jiangsu province and uh, represents one of the most valuable uh, SH, uh, the Ghost Lanterns. Mm -hmm. uh, players need to interact with NPCs, find and uh, analyze the clues, and uh, during this process, uh, there are various uh, games. Uh, uh, yeah, many games allowing players to participate in, such as pitch and pot games and uh, paper cut, of course. Making the lantern is the most important clue that helps players to find the murders. Okay, let's uh, turn to the MMO. Yeah, Lantern Riddle. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the most uh, popular intangible heritage represented in the Justice Online. Players need to read the riddles and uh, type in the answers. For example, what 
belongs to you, but gets you, but gets used all the time by others. Okay, the answer is your name. If you type in the correct answers, you will receive various uh, game rewards in the games. And uh, like a riddle, a mooncake uh, gambling is one of the indigenous intangible heritage activities that popular in the southwestern China. So the rule in, uh, of the game uh, of these mini games in the games uh, are exactly the same as this real world addition. Players just uh, need to throw six six dices and uh, see the combination to decide who is the winner of the game. Um, I have seen that in, in the forum. A lot of players said that, oh, it is, it is my first time to know this game in from the Justice Online. Yeah. Um, I like, uh, yeah, you know, we all know that China is a multi-ethnic country. Justice Online mainly focus more on the intangible cultural heritage of Han people. But a dream of Jianghu depict uh, uh, intangible cultural heritage from minority groups, yeah, such as Miao embroidery, is a good case. Players uh, can see how it works from game activities and uh, can further understand its uh, techniques and the skills on the game website and the documentaries yeah, in games. So, uh, yeah, not shells. MMO, MMORPG games in China are considered intangible heritage as a uniform concept and uh, contain various SH uh, elements from different areas of China. Uh, so, yeah, from uh, all the. Uh, oh, um, yeah, <laughs> And the second, uh, Jiben Sha, is a Chinese edition LARP game, focuses more on. Uh, in-depth introduction to the intangible traditions and the craft in a local area and uh, teaches participants the indigenous traditional skills hand-by-hand -hand through playing. And uh, finally, MMORPG games portray the intangible cultural heritage of minority groups, but it is hard to find the cultural and the historical elements of minority. Uh, yeah. From of minority groups in Jibersha games. Okay, this is a brief introduction of my re recent research. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to contact me by emails. Thank you so much.